Hi to all my farmer friends, clients to Weather Wealth in 12 countries, commodity traders, agribusinesses, ETF investors, you name it. We're going to be talking about the wheat market, particularly and briefly about soybeans today. This report actually recorded on Wednesday, 20th of September. So, first of all, in our Weather Wealth newsletter here in the weeks ahead, we're going to be talking a lot about South American weather. Will this bear market in grains end with El Nino and dryness in the northern parts of Brazil? It actually is affecting right now the coffee market. We caught the lows for our weather wealth clients about two weeks ago in coffee as it's getting hot and dry. But let's talk about the wheat market today, okay? And briefly why we were bearish soybeans uh, earlier in this month, even though we've had some dry weather at the end of August, for sure. So, a weather spider that we uh, supply to clients around the world in about eight different markets has been bearish wheat up until this last week. It's in the neutral category right now, but that seasonality you see there, scales go from plus four to minus four, plus four bullish, minus four bearish. The seasonality will begin to become more bullish or plus two or plus three into October based on history. The global crop situation Maybe a little bit too bold at a plus three. There's droughts in Australia. There's problems planting wheat in the Ukraine. There were previous problems in parts of China from flooding last spring and Canada. But moisture is improving, as you see there, in green over the last week or so for Kansas and Oklahoma. I recommend it to my clients to uh, earlier to sell some 2024 wheat production if you're a hedger, if you're a farmer. But in December wheat, the market could go higher. Here's what's going on right now. Okay, so we have the tightest stocks in wheat since the El Nino 2014-2015, right? So why hasn't the wheat market exploded? Well, seasonally, wheat prices go down into October, and the stronger dollar is really affecting the market. Okay, so back in 2014-2015, look at this. We had a major bull move in wheat during October. That could still happen this year. But notice where prices are. Price around six bucks or so today, there were four and a half dollars back in 2014. So even though we rallied about 15, 20 percent during October and November, the dollar here in the circle was much weaker back then. That's been one of the problems. Demand has really been hurt compared to the dollar today, which is quite a bit higher. Even with all these problems for the wheat crop around the world, exports have actually lagged quite a bit. So we have a net short position in wheat. And as a result, this dryness in Australia and some weather concerns potentially in Ukraine for planting, et cetera, and seasonality should help support the wheat market somewhat as we go into the month of October. How about soybeans? Yes, our crop is not that great. We did have some really good rains with about 75% of the Corn Belt getting decent late July, actually early July through early August rains, keeping the crops from being a disaster. Not great, but okay. Some areas have good yields. Other areas, like in parts of Minnesota and northern Iowa, don't have very good yields. So why were we bearish soybeans most of September? Seasonality. From my experience, look at that. 13 to 15 years, beans went lower ahead of harvest uh, in September. And also, while well, with a warm month, harvesting is going to be picking up speed here very, very quickly. As you can see, in 2011, 2012, even during the major bull markets of droughts, we went lower during those years. And that's one reason why I was relatively bearish beans here for my clients. But can things change? So what we're going to be watching for South American weather in my newsletter is the Antarctic Oscillation Index, is El Nino, is the Indian Dipole. All these factors are going to play a major, major role in what happens to South American production of, of corn and soybeans later on this year in 2024. The record warm Atlantic, unbelievable. El Nino, warmest along the coast of Peru, the positive Indian dipole, bringing droughts to Australia, okay, cool over Indonesia, uh, warm over uh, the eastern part of Africa. And what it tends to do, actually, is create this situation, hot, going into October, November. Right now, that's being a bullet situation in coffee. Will that change? What do you do in coffee? How do you trade options and futures? And will we have a bull market in grains later on this year after harvest? Again, you have to stay tuned. We'll have an occasional report here on bar charts, but I suggest getting a two-week free trial period to Weather Wealth and join the farmers and traders all over the world that have taken advantage of my advice, not just in weather forecasts, but my experience understanding trading commodities 
for about 35 years. Thanks. Have a great weekend.